Hello, this is Jimmy Steller, and I literally just finished watching a movie with a good friend of mine who you will know as Convolutionization. Hi there, Steller fans. How's it going? All right, this is Convolutionization and Jimmy Steller, and we just saw a quaint little film starring Edward Norton called Leaves of Grass. Pile of crap. Well, there you go. That's <laughs> There's an early warning symbol into how this review is going to go from convolutionization's point of view. As to what I thought, well, see, when I first heard of this film and I saw that Edward Norton was in it, I, Im I was immediately interested because Edward Norton is one of my favorite actors working right now. He's right up there with Philip Seymour Hoffman. For anybody who's seen my Jack Goes Boating review, you'll understand. I decided I might as well go see it, because, I mean, it's Edward Norton playing twin brothers in this film. And he, one of them is an Ivy League professor, and the other one is this dope-dealing guy in Oklahoma. And it's just, it's so funny, the contrast in those performances. And Edward Norton, as you all know, is famous for playing these duality roles. And now that I've finally seen it, I'm just, oh my god, it was terrible. It was so bad. But the worst thing of all, what makes it worse is that it what it didn't start out bad. It had such a promising beginning. It, it could have been so great. And at times I thought, wow, this is a good movie. But as the movie rolls on, the storyline just got so convoluted. The script just got lost in itself and... It started making absolutely no sense. It started ending about four or five times before the movie actually ended. It's uh, I can't keep I can't go on. I got to give some time to convolutionization here. So it's time for him to speak. Go ahead, man. Okay, let me try and orient to this uh, to a YouTube level. Okay, when you go and see a video and you look at the user comments, you see that some people don't put punctuation. Some people don't have capitals. And some people just write anti-Semitic things for some strange reason or completely irrelevant crap that has nothing to do with the video they're commenting on. Don't these people just like frustrate you to no end? Now, now this movie is like that, only magnified by ten hundred thousand times. This movie the plot of this movie actually makes those comments look like clear-cut, crystal-clear gems. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> works of art compared to the plot of this movie. I can't believe it. Uh, it. It's just unbelievable how Edward Norton, such a prestigious actor, could actually be in this movie. So the, we basically just saw this movie and we're just really ticked about it. Well... I'm more amused at how ticked I am because I'm just I was I went into this with very high hopes as I just implied and to be fair it met up to some of my standards in the term of Edward Norton as such it starts out okay it starts out with two twin brothers Billy and Brady Billy's the high class educated one who's like this Ivy League professor and Brady is this pot smoking guy in Oklahoma little Dixie and uh, he's just, he sells paw and he makes like, a, he's just a, kind of like described his brother as a complete mess up. Uh, but he's also really smart. He's not just some dumb hick. He's got this potential that he never acted on the way his brother did. It's just interesting to see how he pl applied his intellect to his like business. Because so, at the beginning, you see both brothers in their environment. And I thought that was really well executed. I mean, what did you think? I, I guess... To give Edward Norton the benefit of the doubt, it was very difficult to play two characters at once. And uh, he did that pretty well. I can't really find fault in that. Yeah, exactly. I personally think it was fantastic because, I mean, like he, like I said, he's used to playing these kinds of characters. But I think he topped himself this time because he literally is talking to himself in many parts of the movie. And those parts of the movie are actually the parts where I really liked the film because his conversations with himself... Well, I mean, like, Billy and Brady talking to each other is really, really interesting to watch. So, one problem I really had with this film was all the weird introductions they gave these characters. And like a bad Seinfeld episode, they all conveniently come back. They give trouble to both the brothers. 
It's really it's such contrivance though a lot of the time. I, oh yeah, yeah, I, d- I I definitely agree with that. Some of the characters were pivotal to the plot, but it uh, wasn't really uh, 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 fully developed as to uh, why. In the beginning, though, it was really well set up in terms of the brothers. The brother, okay, Brady fools his brother Billy into thinking that Brady is dead which prompts Billy to come back to Oklahoma for the first time in years. And then he finds out he's been tricked all along by his brother, who has not only been, I don't know, there's just this really big plot that Brady has, because he's in trouble. It's really weird, because he sets up this giant this giant greenhouse thing, this thing for growing pot. He has this amazingly elaborate system, and you can tell this is completely and utterly brilliant in its build-up and its payoff. What are your thoughts on the whole pot growing thing? Uh, I, I still think that the staff was uh, very focused on the restor- recreation of a realistic looking grow up, and that maybe they were uh, a little baked when they created <laughs> the plot. Well, maybe we got the sad thing is though, I got that I personally got to keep in mind though, is that this is a comedy, and I guess supposed to, I guess I guess people will say in the comments of this that we didn't get the comedy well (laughs) i mean the real comedy that for me was edward norton speaking to edward norton and and so fluently and flawlessly that was real gold but the comedic moments that were played up to be comedy just fell flat on their face i mean was there one okay convolutionization was there one built-up comedic moment in the film that you genuinely laughed at no, no, I, I, I can't say that the movie was particularly well done at all. So there's absolutely nothing that you like about the film, apart from Edward Norton's performance? No. I'm also fairly critical of the camera. Uh, if you watch the movie, you will find it um, doesn't switch scenes to save money. So uh, it will follow around the characters. Sometimes they go out of focus. Mostly, it it shows an experience on the part of the uh, filmographer. You think you noticed that? I I did. Yes. The, what was that you were saying earlier? Though you were saying that to, you were telling this to me before, but I think it was like you used a description of like a soap opera. You said it was soap opera level. Is that what you said? Oh yes. Um, if you ever watch the BBC, you will uh, maybe come across Coronation Street. For uh, I've for never example. seen it. Uh, anyway, most soap operas. Coronation Street included, will uh, reduce the number of shots they need to take by simply extending the scene from one camera angle. Uh, This movie did exactly the same thing, and you'll have the characters interact as much without switching to another angle. So what do you think of the philosophy they used? They they were trying to make a, a lot of philosophical references to the movie, but I don't think that it translated through very much. Uh, what they were they did do they did try a lot of philosophical referencing they did did try i believe that they interpreted uh plato wrong in the beginning uh (laughs) what they were talking about was the form which is the ultimate the ultimate uh happiness the ultimate good which plato discussed through socrates which involves trying to become the just man this does not involve animalism or beast or a- a- any of what they were talking about at all. They, they they just took random phrases and used it to their own advantage. Well, yeah, I did notice there was a lot of philosophical jargon thrown in there, which is, I don't know, I guess some of it made sense. Like the whole passion over intellect start. The way they started out with that was really promising. But then they just, I don't know. The thing with all these storylines is they mm. all went... Absolutely nowhere. Half the conflicts were never even resolved. So Brady kills the kills Pug, and then makes it look like a hate crime, so they don't think it's a drug crime. Meanwhile, but the problem was the orthodontist, the crazy orthodontist with the stereotypical Jewish wife and the Jewish kids. Eh, he sees Brady, thinks he's Billy, and uh, anyway, so he, he looks up Billy on the internet after hearing like you said a remote report on the radio of his murder and for some reason that makes him want to look up Billy Kincaid for no reason and then he looks up the fact that he has a twin buys a gun 
goes down there, and I don't even know what he's doing there. Like, he, he basically rounds up everybody there. Yeah, he roll. okay, it starts with him yelling and screaming, and it ends with him writhing on the ground like he's having a giant seizure. It's so bad. I mean, what editor took that and said, yeah, this will work? I, 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 I really don't know what you're talking about here, Stellar. I mean... It's logical for someone to listen to a news report, buy a gun, go to someone's house, round everyone up, and then ride around on the ground. <laughs> what, why wouldn't? Why would? What would you do differently? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, I didn't even know whether he was there to kill them or whether he was there to arrest them. He was. Just, it's like he he didn't even know. He didn't even know either. It's like. Of course he knew. Haven't you ever heard of a captive audience? If he wanted to watch them. <laughs> he wanted to dance for them. Oh my god, dance he did. He was oh my god, was the worst <laughs> over the top performance I've ever seen this year and in quite a while. I've and never seen a person's arm flail so this, much with a gun. And the best thing is when Edward Norton's he's just there's one of the Edward Norton's Billy, he's looking at this guy with complete disbelief at what's happening rather than being shocked at the fact that there's a gun in his face, you know, by this random guy who he doesn't know, but he shows complete disbelief and disdain and I kept thinking like he was looking at the screenwriters behind the camera. I seriously thought he was looking. Like I wouldn't be surprised if he was thinking that in his mind. This, it, this, this was, was just awful. This was the actor's own touch, and it also shows this is this was a low budget movie because they couldn't afford to redo the scene. Oh man! And then not only so a few shots are fired, and a minute later the cops suddenly show up. Yes, they out, do out of the blue. Oh yeah, and uh, so one of the brothers dies, and along with the Jewish guy. Well, okay, so Brady ends up getting shot, and at that point I thought the movie was going to end on that weird point. I was, And what with Billy's, you know, his uh, eulogy at the end, I thought that was going to be the ending right there. But no, it expands. For no reason he goes to the... Then he goes to the rabbi's place, like, to tell them about... Brady was the one who killed Pug, and... And then you think it's going to end, but no, there's more! Exactly, the film tried to focus on philosophy. It talked about Plato, Aristotle. Uh, Walt also, Whitman, too. It mentions Walt Whitman's poetry. I don't care about him. He's not a philosopher. He's a poet. That's a different thing altogether. I'm snooty about that. Much like Plato and Aristotle. Did you know they were elitists? Anyway, enough about that and elitism. Mostly the interpretation of what Plato was trying to say was very superficial. They tried to apply it to the moral of the film, and it failed completely as a film. Passion, when not ruled by reason, destroyed most of the characters, except for Edward Norton as the philosopher. Because you can't kill people in ties and suits. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, okay... I will agree. There was a, it was very superficially done. I mean, if they were trying to show us this film that was showing us how passion destroys us as human beings, how we break the world, well, it really did that its job well. But oh my god, the way they did it was just so over the top and ridiculous. It's like a comedy that I don't laugh at for the right reasons, and it's a drama I don't take seriously. The thrilling mo it's supposed to be this. I guess they were trying to make an In Bruges kind of movie, or like a Kiss Kiss Bang Bang movie, both of which were fantastic, but this was, oh my god. By the end of this film, I didn't care. I just, I wasn't that interested in, like, I was just sighing, waiting for the film to end, you know, because it was just, it's like they were trying to replicate that mastery from In Bruges, and it just fell flat on its face. I guess now is as good, as good a time as any for a, a concluding statement. So I'll let my good friends finish this off. To be fair, I am a very critical individual when it comes to movies. If you want to see Edward Norton's performance, I might recommend this film. Actually, no, I still don't recommend this film. But if you like Edward Norton, maybe you'll appreciate it but more than I. If you want to learn about philosophy and what Plato said, I would recommend The Republic. I would not recommend going to this film. It does not answer any questions that you may have. It tries to replace it with its own philosophy, which we both disagree with. And as a comedy, it falls flat. Its plot is terrible. 
And I still believe that the writers were baked. Anyway, so, yeah. Bad movie, good Edward Norton performance, good Susan Sarandon performance. Good performances in a terrible film with a bad screenplay. That's Jimmy Steller and Convolutionization. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks for listening, and uh, have a great night.